Good afternoon, everyone. This is BW Education. And today I'm very fortunate to have with us Mr. Raghav Gupta, MD Coursera, India and Asia Pacific, and Mr. Shreyas Raisoni, Executive Director, GH Raisoni. And today we will be discussing the theme Advancing Higher Education in India, another chapter uh, in this discussion. So my first question to you both, Mr. Gupta Raghav and Mr. Shreyas Raisoni, I'll be calling you Shreyas. Uh, is about the shifting demands of industry and as well as the aspirations of the young, the learners, the youth. So uh, there's a demand for flexible learning, there's a demand for personalized learning and industry relevant learning experiences. How is your university uh, preparing itself to meet that demand? Right. So do you want me to go first? Yes. All right. So uh, there are a number of ways universities can consider implementing like uh, for, uh, there are a number of ways the universities uh, can meet these demands. Uh, uh, you can embrace online and blended learning. Uh, second thing that you can do is develop customizable degree programs. Uh, fostering industry partnerships is also quite important for the same. Implementing micro credentials and badging. So I will uh, explain this a little more. Uh, you can have validate uh, you can validate specific skills or competencies gained through short term certificate courses. So that helps in uh, uh, that helps the students. Leveraging data analytics, offer professional developments for faculty. So I firmly believe that in today's day and age. A university or an institute is only as good as their faculty. So spending and investing in their development is also paramount. Uh, next is foster a culture for innovation. So all stakeholders in your in, uh, institute or university should be continuously thinking about innovation from students to your faculty, to your departments, to your head of departments, to your deans, to your principals. Everybody should be uh, aligned in the same direction and that is towards innovation and how in various domains one can innovate and disrupt uh, the domain. And lastly, uh, last but certainly not the least, uh, continuous feedback and evaluation, timely reintrospection uh, of departments, institutes and universities. Uh, evaluating where they are currently, where the market is going, where the domains are going, and then realigning themselves to that is also very important. Thank you. Uh, Raga, coming to you, uh, interacting with industries as well as academia, universities, you would have a great, very vast idea about the needs of the day. Uh, what are the emerging trends in this regard and what priorities are you seeing in the evolving landscape, higher education landscape? Yeah, absolutely. Great question to kick us off, uh, Meha. And uh, I, I must say, wonderful to be here with you and with Shreyas. Um, so if we just step back a little bit, right, over the last uh, three years, um, I think there have been three big things that we have all experienced, right? One, of course, was COVID and the whole uh, era of uh, learning fully online while campuses shut down. Now, what that did was that um, as a result of working from home, industry really accelerated digitalization and the adoption of digital technologies. So across industries, we are finding that learning digital learning data related uh, knowledge and competencies has become extremely extremely important and as all of us were you know just starting to absorb a lot of this change and figure out how uh, hybrid work from home work from office work from campus kind of things work out as well about 6 months ago uh, we saw chat gpt come in and the impact of generative ai come in and it's still very unclear what kind of impact all of this will have, right? So from a higher education standpoint, these are the three big things we've all seen, right? COVID and 
uh, online learning completely, digitalization in industry and the ask for new skills among students because of that. And then very quickly, the impact of generative AI and chat GPT. Because of all of this, um, I think there's significant impact on higher education that we are seeing. And you know, when I speak to uh, academia and leaders in academia, um, here's what I'm hearing a little bit, right? Uh, firstly, many academic leaders are broadly focused in four areas. Now, these four areas have not changed even despite COVID, despite digital transformation, despite generative AI. But the context within each of these four areas has changed. And let me uh, explain that a little bit. The first area of focus for most academic leaders has been uh, strengthening academic excellence. And Shreya spoke about this as well in the context of faculty, in the context of you know, bringing cutting edge curricula to students. Right Now, what has changed is the importance of industry aligned curricula has gone up than it used to be the case because of rapid change in how industry functions. And traditionally, higher education has had a mechanism of slow changes to curricula, but no longer can one afford to have you know, slow, slow changes to curricula happening. So how does one think about building industry aligned curriculum and stay on the cutting edge there a little bit? The second has been building faculty competency, which is not a new topic at all. What is different is the domains in which faculty need to build their competency has changed, right? If I'm a professor of marketing at Rice University, I could teach traditional marketing in the past, but chances are today I need to teach digital marketing, I need to teach data analytics, I might even be teaching artificial intelligence in marketing. So the context of my domain has changed. I was always probably you know, uh, required to do research, but today I'm also required to not only have skills to teach in a in-person classroom, but I should also be building skills to teach online as well. And in an engaging manner, not where you know the class goes to sleep kind of an online experience, right? So the context of how faculty are teaching, I think has changed. And this is under the broad bucket of strengthening academic excellence. I think the second area where academic leaders are focused on is driving student employability and placements. And on the Coursera platform, we have seen the rise of industry micro credentials, right? That um, industry as an educator has become a very important topic. And not only does a student want to learn from faculty in campuses, but also learn from um, Google and IBM and Facebook and Salesforce and so on and so forth. So that's become a very important trend industry as an educator. And also how does one link students to employers, not just based on the degree that they've taken, but on the basis of the skills that they have learned. And many companies are saying, we want to now start moving towards what is known as skills first hiring. You know, how do you demonstrate the skills that you have learned, not just the degree and the courses that you have taken as well. So we are seeing some of that. Uh, the third area is growing rankings and brand perception, which always have been important. Um, so how are you thinking about, you know, strengthening uh, brand perception among students and parents? How are you thinking about your performance on NIRF and NAC and QS and so on? And then the last thing I would say is accelerating enrollments and revenue growth are important for academic leaders. And in today's world, launching new programs, whether these are on campus or online, uh, are important. You know, are you are you thinking about an MBA with specialization in generative AI? I don't know if business schools are doing that already, but many of these topics are becoming important. And then are you able to strengthen everything that you're delivering to students and continue to grow your student base, continue to grow enrollments at upwards of 20%? How does one kind of do that? So yeah, like I said, you know, three broad changes, uh, four areas that many academic leaders are focusing on, but within these, uh, the context has changed quite, quite, uh, quite dramatically. Uh, happy to talk about how to address these changes, maybe subsequently in this conversation, but yes. I thought maybe start with that uh, first. Great. So wonderful description. And uh, you also mentioned skills first hiring. So skills is a very important area. Uh, so uh, I want to understand from both of you, uh, first chairs and then uh, Raghav, you know, uh, basically the, the skills needed are constantly changing. You know, there's a lot of um, uh, new, you know, uh, uncertainty because uh, industry demands are constantly changing. So I want to understand first from you, Raghav, 
how are you addressing this you know constantly evolving demand um, about scaling and also uh, how do you leverage platforms like coursera um, or any other platform for that uh, you know uh, industry uh, uh, you know industry relevant con 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 you know skills content and also how you know if i if i may understand how do you uh, uh, develop that acumen among students to keep learning new skills as they evolve because nothing is fixed at the moment so if you may share that aspect and meha your question is for shweas right i think you mentioned yes. my name but yes. just confirm yes. Okay. yes right so uh, there are a few ways uh, that uh, you we can hope to meet the demand for all these emerging skill skills and career paths that you are talking about uh, the first and foremost is collaborating with your peers so uh, collaborating with educational institutes i think that is uh, highly like very important for a university or an institute like us to know what our peers are doing uh, take references from them and uh, Uh, as a policy we ensure that in all our statutory bodies we have a good representation from uh, institutes such as iit iims nits so that we know what the uh, what the domain leaders are doing and where the world is going and we want to be at pace with them second there is a uh, now because of platforms like coursera there is uh, what's happened is access has increased there is quite a bit of access to learning materials online uh, you find them on coursera as well and uh, there is a lot of open source material available as well uh, next you the, as an institute one has to partner with the industry as well because ultimately what we are doing we are in the business of training students or people to um, like to prepare them and make them industry ready lastly uh, there is something called as continuous model improvement continuously improve models like to ensure they stay up to date with the latest trends and information by incorporating uh, the latest knowledge about emerging skills and career paths ai models can also uh, be relevant and valuable guidance to individuals in these areas one thing that's important is this uh, to note that while these models can provide information and guidance they are not the only source of learning engaging with formal educational institutes industry and uh, the most important is the practical experience even that is crucial for developing the necessary skills and expertise in these jobs Yeah. Raghav, you would definitely like to share your perspective, and also if you may add, how is Coursera fulfilling this very vital need for uh, yeah. relevant yeah, skills? You know, so I think the starting point, uh, Neha, is uh, firstly to understand what's happening with skills, right? Uh, again, I hear from a lot of academic leaders. There's a lot of noise, but there aren't enough clear messages in terms of how industry is changing, right? somebody saying data is important somebody saying mechatronics is important somebody saying ai is important so there are lots of messages that are coming one of the roles that we can play given the size and scale of coursera is to try and distill down this a little bit and say look for the next 3 years for the next 5 years what are the changes that we are expecting and also at the same time to also say what is not going to change as well right and it is important to acknowledge that there are certain things which are going to continue to be important and are not going to change in fact we are ourselves saying at coursera that a lot of human skills are becoming increasingly more important as we undergo changes because of digital and ai and so on and so things like problem solving things like critical thinking things like teamwork leadership uh, communication these are essential skills which are not changing which are becoming more important that's one thing second is to um call out you know what are those skills that are becoming important so for example we work with um, an mba school in delhi the imi business school you know strong institution and the director said to us uh, two years ago when we were starting this partnership that look when 
all of us were undergoing education excel was a base skill but today python is a base skill so everybody who's studying mba at their institution are learning python as a base skill right it's not just meant for computer science students so how do you identify these relevant topics and how do you make them available i think is the second uh, part of it the third part which i mentioned a little bit earlier is industry micro credentials because industry clearly knows which skills are changing and one of the things that we had done about 4 years ago is we had got mckinsey to do a piece of research for us and say look which are those jobs that are going to be in extremely high demand which are digital in nature and are entry level jobs which you can you know take up as a student coming out of campuses and they'd come up with a list of 75 such job roles which are gateway jobs or entry level jobs that are digital in high demand and so on and we are working on creating micro credentials for all of these 75 jobs today about 32 34 of them are filled and so google is teaching data analytics and facebook is teaching you know uh, 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 social media marketing and so on on the coursera platform and then the last thing i would say is you know now the regulation in india is extremely clear that online learning can complement and supplement up to 40% of credits that are being taught on campus and so very actively colleges and universities are leveraging the coursera platform to say we will provide learning to students but students will also get credit for that learning and they will see career impact for that learning and to your question earlier how do you motivate students to 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 learn right um, i mean very simply and all of us have been students right you want to do what is essential and what is essential is for credit learning and for career learning students don't want to take what is value added outside of that because there's enough workload on their plates in any case so many campuses are saying look i will integrate online platforms i will for example provide python to my mba students they will also gain credits for for that learning and so that's an effective mechanism are uh, to be able to implement i think you're yeah so sorry so uh, raga one more question is uh, is a shift happening among students and faculty uh, about the uh, willingness to keep on adapting to new technologies what has been your experience about that um you know so like with everything right and especially with new technology there are early adopters and then there are you know people who come after and people who come after and so on um i think on the coursera platform when the pandemic had hit we made it available to everybody for free and at that point in time it was a forced adoption if you will right and a thousand campuses adopted the coursera platform today whoever is adopting the coursera platform as a institution or as a student are doing it out of their own free will and obviously like i said um regulation is encouraging all of that and today there are over 100 plus campuses who are currently you know leveraging the coursera platform now i'm using data to supplement the fact that it takes time for new technology to get adopted and it takes some time for benefits to start kicking in for more and more people to then follow and that's the journey that i think we are on that you know a year after the pandemic ended enough people have seen value to say look the future um is not going to be this is online and this is offline or on campus the future will be education a lot of it happens on campus and then some of it maybe 10 20 30 percent happens online but it will just be education it will not be we will not see too much of a differentiation between online and offline education it will just get blended and hybrid and so on to add to what raghav has mentioned uh, discussed about uh, micro credentials so shares what has been the experience at raisoni uh, group of institutions how are you integrating you know uh, online uh, credits into the overall curriculum um i think raghav has already mentioned so uh, now they're allowing up, up to 40% uh, to be online this thing uh, and now i uh, so with the uh, onset of implementation of the new education policy that came in at in 2020 even that facilitates a lot of uh, like flexibility and dynamic growth um, it also uh, allows students like from our college to have access to for example say case studies of our business group 
we can incorporate those case studies and their take on that within our curriculum and now the policies are allowing us or helping us to do it um, there are other government portals as well such as swayam nptl which now have become mandatory to be part of the curriculum in some form or the other and uh, within our group all our institutions are now autonomous so by virtue of uh, institutes being autonomous or having our own universities we are able to uh, like be on uh, continuously adapt uh, and evolve our curriculum and and include and integrate all of these things uh, within our curriculum coming to the big topic of ai because that is really the talk of the town now and um, uh, you know there is a chat gpt which has really disrupted industry which is really disrupting the way we are we all you know learn and function so uh, from university perspective that is academic perspective and from uh, online platforms perspective what is your take on that and how do you intend to uh, leverage uh, ai while you have discussed it earlier but i would like to know about it in detail see uh, there are certain like uh, within the uh, with the onset of generative ai immersive experiences and chatbots so let us first take up immersive experiences so now with virtual reality and augmented reality where as it is seeing a lot of applications being developed around us in the in the real world like uh, and and the bracket is also quite huge from uh, children with, uh, like from 5 years of age to 50 years of age there is application for everybody for example if you go right now to a good uh, real estate agent to buy some property even before the buildings made they can give you a, an entire virtual tour of how the space is going to look like and now all of this is only possible because of the immersive experience that is coming in with chatbots uh, and uh, chat gpt you can see now every other website you can see every other business are now using this so similarly integrating this within education is also not very difficult because it can help curate personalized experiences for our users and mm -hmm. users and uh, and with personalized experiences to go uh, to scale things up like earlier what issue we used to face with personalization was was we were not able to scale now with the onset of these tools at our exp uh, disposal uh we are able to uh, scale such personalized experiences as well and uh, yeah also uh, one more thing that i would like to point out is that even in terms of demand and if you see where all industries are going everybody is trying to inculcate ai in whichever way they can like to uh, and probably have a deeper penetration in terms of their addressable market so there is definitely a lot of growth there is definitely a lot of future in this domain and uh, and you can see that as well like at our uh, organization we do we do uh, make use of a lot of analytics and the and the and the shift that we are able to observe from say core fields or students interest from taking admissions in core fields to soft departments there is a drastic shift so all of these indicators do tell us that there is a bright scope for all uh, for this domain in the near future uh, raghav you have announced uh, chat gpt powered tools to improve uh, teaching learning effectiveness uh, if you can elaborate on that and if i may also uh, ask you about the concerns which are raised about uh, ai and how it will you know impact Uh, maybe creativity maybe you know there are uh, questions of ethics involved uh, how would you like to address these questions yeah and you know i i like go some of what uh, shwes mentioned as well it's a fundamentally game changing technology right it's as fundamental as google search or the smartphone and we're just about starting to understand and experience of what all this will do right we have ourselves thinking of this as look coursera started in 2012 in stanford 
but in uh, 2023 this is probably going to help us go to coursera 2.0 just because of the fundamental changes in technology and capability that are now coming um so we are doing a couple of things right we are saying look if you go to uh, for the learner if you go to youtube you watch a video it's a passive form of learning you're listening to a video uh today if you come to coursera you watch a video you engage in some discussion forum you also take assessments it's an active form of learning now with chat gpt we are integrating and creating something that we're calling coach where every learner will have a personalized coach that is going to sit in the course that you're taking and the coach can answer questions the coach can give you practice assignments the coach can tell you how this particular learning might help you in your career uh, you might not understand a complex question you might ask it a question like you know explain this concept like you would to a 10 year old so it will simplify the answer for you and all of that and so it will personalize it will make it interactive and also what we are very conscious about is when you use chat gpt it crawls the wide internet and comes back with sometimes wrong answers it hallucinates and all of that we are limiting the chat gpt model that we are training to the coursera data right we are saying look only go to the coursera platform which is content from top universities and companies so that it reduces the chances of incorrect answers and responses and so on so coach is going to be like a personalized tutor uh, that's going to be available and it's launching quite shortly the second thing that we're doing is enabling faculty to really turbocharge how they think about curricula and content and we're calling it co course builder and we're saying look faculty can come in and say this is a topic i want to teach here is the material i already have available and then course builder will automatically populate a whole curriculum for them it will also pull content from the coursera platform so you know if you are an mba faculty you're teaching marketing and if you want to pull something from Wharton or London Business School into your into your uh, uh, curriculum, it can help you identify the right pieces of content and so on and so forth. It will help you generate assignments. It will help you generate practice questions and so on. Uh, the power is, of course, still with you as a faculty member. You can edit it. You can you know make changes if you want to. If as a faculty member you've created a one-hour video, the pedagogy in the tool will say one hour online is too long. It will snip up your video into six to eight minute sections. And make it more engaging and so on and so forth and we think that faculty will you know really enjoy uh being able to uh have almost like personalized uh, uh teaching assistants with them right you literally have like 20 teaching assistants with you and you can then craft a curricula that students will really really enjoy and we have again keeping in mind that uh you know there are many risks as well so we've ourselves published um a set of ai principles and said this is how we will integrate this technology keeping in mind these guiding principles so that both for the learner for students and for faculty members we can really turbocharge the learning experience going forward finally uh, what is your take on how universities in india should uh, think about collaborating with platforms like coursera this question is to you raghav I mean that's a simple that's a simple <laughs> answer, right? Um, like I mentioned, we, we you know when students come to Coursera directly, only the motivated students come, right? And if you're eighteen, nineteen years old, twenty years old, you're looking for guidance from your faculty, from your university. So some students do come to Coursera, not some lakhs of students do come to Coursera. But what we find as a more powerful mechanism to be able to work together is to partner with an institution and say. Look, university and Coursera will now make this kind of learning available to students, so that for the students, it is still their faculty, their university who are guiding them, and that becomes a seamless experience for the student. Where the student might say, "I'm going to learn marketing in class, but I'm going to learn Python on Coursera, but I will be mentored by one of the faculty members from my university." So that institutional partnership. Uh, is very important to be able to guide students and make it into a successful uh, program. Many institutions have said, "Look, we will integrate Coursera for credit. We will have fifteen twenty percent of credits now come from learning on the Coursera platform, and the balance eighty percent, eighty five percent, our faculty will leverage Coursera as a part of their teaching and learning. And you know that's how it works out quite well. So that's a that's possibly a good way to think about it." Uh, Shreyas, any closing remarks? Any any thoughts on the theme? Uh, 
it's probably what raghav just mentioned as well that uh, or probably echoing what he is mentioned as well that the sentiment is same from this side as well that we are also looking at ways to collaborate with uh, more and more avenues and uh, and our uh, focus currently is on to uh, to give our students the best user experience how we can holistically develop them and this aspect is definitely growing day by day where they need to upskill themselves while they are still part of the education setup so yeah that is where the future is as per me so thank you uh, raghav thank you shreyas it has been a great discussion on this very pertinent theme and uh, we look forward to having more discussions on the same you know on similar uh, important themes in future thank you so much all of you